So welcome back guys, just a quick chat here while we're in the cruise now, 35,000 feet and we're doing MAC decimal 78 which is what we expect with a cost index of 28. So just review with a situation, what we normally do is we do a cruise check where we check that everything is as it should be. MCP is OK. That's all tuned to the direction, 35,000. These are all set. Distance is set. Uh, we're in the cruise. What I normally do is I select climb there. So we've got climb power if we need it. But I'll do that in a second. As you can see, we're tracking along nicely. We've got a nice following wind, not a huge one. But everything's looking good. While we're in the cruise, we can actually turn this off. So there we go. And now the data comes up here. So we've got about an hour and a half till we start the descent. I just thought I'd just let you have a little look inside here. Overhead's looking good. We turn the seatbelt signs off. Everything else is okay here. Pressurisation looks good here. And uh, everything is as it should be. Got the main tanks here are on. And here you can see the two FMCs. At the moment we've got the uh, details showing. So as you can see we've got 782 miles to run. We're expecting about 2.8 tonnes on landing and 630 miles to the descent point which is about an hour and a half. So all looking good so far. What I can say is it's a beautiful aircraft, it's a lovely aircraft to fly. It has its challenges when you're flying single man operations because you're doing the work of two pilots. Things like changing radio frequencies. At the moment looking ahead we seem to have quite a lot of ATC online. It's the weekend, it's Saturday and um, oh well some of it's gone off but there still seems to be quite a lot of ATC about so who knows we may still have to start juggling frequencies and uh, doing the landing and everything is, is as I said is quite a challenge. My controls aren't the best they're the old they're quite old now so I'm thinking of getting some new flight controls and, and, and throttles um, just to try and because um, my controls are a bit sensitive and no matter what I seem to do I still still seem to sort of squirrel around on the runway during a landing approach but we'll see how this one goes but for now as you can see everything's cool we're in the climb oh sorry we're in the cruise everything's looking quite good so what I do with the FMC now I go to the init reference here, go to index, um, go to performance, N1 limit. At the moment it's in cruise, it's in cruise, so I select climb. Back to the legs page there. And what we should see, there we are, we've now got climb on the um, engine display here now so that's it's not a big deal but it just gives us with climb mode the autopilot the auto flush system has a little bit more thrust capability than than if it was just left in cruise mode that's just in case we need it so I could probably go to 37,000 feet as you can see the yellow bar down here which um, gets narrower and narrower between that one and the red as you climb higher but 35,000 is quite good, you can see we've got a nice little tailwind, nothing serious. But we're doing pretty much the speed we expected to do. Um, so I will leave that and um, the fuel calculation should be pretty close to what I expect. So lovely aircraft, beautiful aircraft to fly. And um, there's a wing views package you can get on at flightsim.to which um, really um, uh, help the, the views outside. We'll go through a couple of them just quickly. So first on the port side, then on the starboard side.
and there you can see them very nice I particularly like them um, they're really really nice and there we are back in the cabin Great, okay, so um, I will see you when we reach the descent in a little over an hour and a half. Thank you for joining me. Well, welcome back, back folks. Um, we're just over 80 miles from the top of descent point and uh, as I suspected it's runway um, <coughs> 36 is going to be used. We have a bit of a tailwind, here's the latest weather. Surface winds are 220, 11 knots, variable. Good visibility, few clouds at 4000, it's 28 degrees, the dew point is 15, QNH 1015. That's the latest. Everything's looking pretty good at the moment. Uh, we going through the uh, landing briefing it'll be a flap 30 landing we've got the weather QNH 1015 the trans level will be 10,000 feet uh, terrain we have to be careful of the terrain east and west and north of the airport and we need to adhere very carefully to the uh, required um, bits and pieces the required um, altitudes so as we we descend first descent is going to be down to 10,000 so we're going to set this to 10,000 that will give us a 2,000 foot clearance of the mountains as we come to the first part on the descent and we'll basically be going down over the Podrica VOR at 3,100 feet and then going outbound down to 1,800 feet over the water before we turn right base for runway 36 so sector safe at the airport is going to be 2,000 feet. Airport elevation is sorted out. We've um, sorted the radio aids as well. So here I've selected 111.113.3 um, as the Podrica VOR, which is a, a waypoint that we're going to be descending over. The ILS frequency is 109.19 set on both, and we'll switch this over as we approach. And the runway heading is 359 degrees, and that's set on both as well. We've set auto brakes 3. Um, our alternate is Dubrovnik, Lima Delta, Delta Uniform. And that's 78, say 80 miles away. We'll have plenty of fuel, 3.8 tonnes left at the moment. We'll have plenty of fuel to be able to do that should we need to. So, navigation accuracy, all of that sorted out. So the briefing is complete. It's going to be a runway 36 landing. We'll be descending to 10,000 initially. Um, and then going down to 8,000. And then down to 3,100 over the VOR. And then we go southbound on the downwind leg down to 1,800 before we turn right base for the runway. It's an ILS Yankee approach. After landing, we'll probably get off... It's either going to be November, probably going to be November, hopefully, or we might actually end up going right to the end of the runway. It depends on the auto brake system and it depends how well I manage to control the aircraft on the rollout, as we have had issues with that. But we'll see. So everything's prepared, auto brakes three. We've selected our initial descent point. LNAV and VNAV are engaged, so at the top of the descent point here the aircraft will start to descend itself and actually VLAB's pretty good in this model um, I haven't had any really serious problems but it's pretty good um, we'll try and get some nice views for you um, as we go in but it will depend we'll see how it goes because it's going to be tough enough to fly this aircraft and talk to you about what I'm doing at the same time but we'll try and get some nice views So the briefing is complete, the descent checklist is complete. But we'll check that now. Descent checklist, air conditioning pressurization is set. MCP out, well we've set 10,000. VNAB is engaged, the FMC has been checked. Speeds are set. In fact, no, we'll, we'll just uh, do the speeds now. So we bring up the FMC, so we're expecting 3.2 tonnes on landing. So we hit the init ref button. 
Now we add 3.2 to the zero fuel weight, 61.5. So that makes 64.7. So we'll put 64.7 here. And it's going to be a flat 30 landing, so that will be 148 knots. And we click that and then click that into there. So now the FMC knows what the speeds are. So flat 15 is 156. Flap 30, final approach speed is 148. So our speeds and minima are checked. All the brakes have been set. VRF, well we know what a VRF now is, is 148. We're probably going to set 150 for the wind, we'll see. The nav radios are set and the course switch is set. And we have 25 miles to go till descent. So we're tracking nicely down the Adriatic. And Podrica, which is in the state of Montenegro, is not that far away. Now I've set VOR2 up, we'll see whether it picks up the VOR. So I've just been typing in the um, top of descent point into the um, into V-Pilot to let the traffic and people know um, what I'm doing. Because very shortly when we hit that top of descent point, we'll put that in and uh, basically can't see anybody else going into that airport. Looks like it's just me. <coughs> so it should be okay. <coughs> so there you can see the coast below. <coughs> and uh, we'll see how good the weather is when we get there. Supposedly clouds, a few, few clouds at 4,000. So we'll see. So looking on the radar, don't see anybody close to me, and there we go, we now hit the top of descent. As you can see the aircraft starts to descend, and uh, hopefully follow the profile. So a quick message to the guys on VATS in there. It's all looking pretty good. I'm going to actually set the first officer's nav display. And uh, that will make it a bit easier. So down we go. <coughs> and there's the Podrica VOR has just come in. So 130 miles to run. We've got 3.5 tonnes of fuel. That's no problem at all. Looking good. Uh, the FMC has uh, identified the ILS there. So as we get close, we should be able to pick that up. So there we are, continuing the descent coming past 30,500 feet almost, 116 miles out as you can see here. We are pretty much on the profile according to what the FMC wants, works it out. So all looking good, at about 25,000 feet we will put the seatbelt signs on. So here we are continuing down the northern side of the Adriatic. We will actually pass Dubrovnik on the way down. It's not a lot of distance between the two actually, about 80 miles. So plenty of fuel to do one missed approach um, and then a second landing attempt and then enough to get us to Dubrovnik should it be necessary. But not expecting a diversion today, the weather's perfectly good. Um, providing I can control the aircraft should be fine. 
as you can see beautiful day nice clear conditions um, it's coming up to about 20 past 6 local time here um, 20 past 4 Zulu Europe is an hour sort of an hour ahead of us but they go on to daylight saving as well <coughs> so it's essentially two hours ahead of Zulu so we're really not that far away from Dubrovnik now so 23,000 feet let's uh, set the seatbelt signs get the passengers in so so far everything is looking quite good <coughs> so we're coming up on 20,000 now here you can actually see the path sort of made beat it out for us so we'll wait till we get to sort of Tibri at 40 miles then I'll reduce the display to 40 miles and down here somewhere roughly about here is uh, Dubrovnik which is our alternate so I'm going to use a little bit of speed brake here to sort of bleed some of the speed off. Yeah, that's fine. So looking good so far. It's a lovely day out there and we can see few clouds so the weather looks to be pretty accurate. Beautiful mountains. Very nice indeed. Okay let's set this 40 miles. There we can see Timbre. looking quite good okay we're leaving that because the uh, we're going to change the uh, local Q&H at 11,000 feet which will be the trans level for this airport what I tend to do is I it, when when you look at a lot of the charts and it says trans altitude and it gives you the trans altitude and then you look at the star or approach charts and it just says trans level and it says by ATC now obviously we've got no ATC in the sim what I tend to do is add 1500 feet to the trans altitude there by the way is Dubrovnik, that's our alternate there you can see out of the left window so going back to the trans level what I will generally do is add 1500 feet or so to the trans altitude so trans altitude for Podgorica is 10,000 so 11,500 we will change to the local Q&H um, and that will sort us out and it works in most cases I've actually got scenery for um, Dubrovnik but I sort of forgot to install it so what you're looking at is the default which isn't too bad actually from this altitude but there it is and as you can see they've got mountains and hills right side of the runway you get a lot of turbulence going into this runway here um, it gets quite bumpy and I believe this is a captain's only landing as well and if you watched the uh, inside the cockpit series on the EasyJet on TV that was on some years ago you'll see a captain doing a landing in there with a little bit of bumps and jumbles going on 
about that. Down there, that is Dubrovnik. And very shortly, <coughs> that little green dot means there's a, a speed reduction coming up and we actually need to go back to 250 knots which will work out fine actually, yeah, FMC should sort it out but as you can see lots of mountains here lots of terrain to be aware of going into Podgorica five hundred to go So we're coming up on 11.5 now. So set the QNH, which is 1015. At the moment it's 17, so we set it there. And any second now, in fact, while we come past, come below 11,000, we'll put the landing lights on so we don't have to worry about that. And now I'm going to select 8,000 here. Landing lights go on. In fact... No, we'll stay at 9,000 just for the terrain so 30 miles out from the airport now and there you can see the speeds coming off <coughs> beautiful view out there Altimeter is 1,000 to go. Okay, turning left. So now we're heading down to Nigox and then Papagol 311. As I said, we've got to watch the mountains here. We stay at 8,000 for big low. Luckily we have um, a really nice visual sort of day here. As you can see so far everything looks quite good. So I think we can come down to 8,000. Use vertical speed. So I'm not so much worried about the fact that we're out of the profile here. The important thing in here is to fly the aircraft um, with looking with reference to the terrain and the safety features. As you can see, we've got to be really careful of the mountains. But all looking good so far. 
We can carry on down to 7,000. In fact, we can go down to 5,000 actually. And let's um, just increase the rate of descent a bit here. Just come back on the profile. As you can see here by the numbers reducing, we're actually picking up the profile again. Terrain looks okay. I'm just going to return this to 1000 feet a minute. So I'm going to produce this down to uh, 3,500 now. Which is Podrica VOR, which is where we want to be. I'll literally be going, going right over the airport. <coughs> And it looks like we've got an aircraft that's taxiing to the runway. So I'll make a radio call. Podrica traffic, Beauty 59 Lima's crossing Papagol 307, passing 5500, descending 3500 direct to the VOR. Be a runway 36 landing, and we're aware of the traffic taxiing to the runway. So hopefully the guy should have heard that. <coughs> so we're going to reduce the speed here to 20 knots. So five miles to the VOR. And we're pretty much right on the money. All looking good. <coughs> Speed's coming off. Check, 1,000 to go. Clear on the left. And on the right. No elevation problems to worry about now. We're pretty much clear of most of the terrain coming in over the, the flat land and the water in a moment. Podgorica traffic, Beauty 59 Lima, crossing the VOR now at 3,500. We're turning right downwind, runway 36, descending to 2,000. So what I do now, we've crossed the VOR. So 109 decibel 9 is correct on both that set. We've now got the ILS set. And hopefully everything will be alright as we turn out. But now we're turning downwind.
Okay, so we're going to go heading select now. So in case we need to extend this. Now as you can see, you've got the ILS indicator there on the left. So you're going to bring this back to 200 knots. Flaps please. So we're continuing along. So 2000, bring the speed back to 180. Flat 5, please. Okay, so we're going to turn right now. 270. Localizer armed. Rodrigo traffic, uh, Beauty 59 Lima now turning right base, runway 36. So, VOR localizer is armed, the ILS is set. Bring the speed back another 10 knots just to catch that there. Flat 10, please. Beauty 59 Lima, now turning final, runway 36, Podrica. Flat 15. Okay, we'll go to 160 knots. And drop the landing gear, please. Gear goes down. Okay, so we're slowing to minimum safe approach speed to give you time. Okay, so back to 150 knots then, please. Arm the approach. And we're visual. Next thing to do, so flaps 30 are set, he's on the speed brake. <coughs> Our beauty 59 Lima, we're visual with the runway now, six miles out, minimum safe approach. So landing checklist, we need to set the missed approach altitude, which is 3,500 I think it is, checked. So landing checklist, gear is down, three green lights, flaps 30 set, speed brake is armed, auto brakes three, missed approach altitude set, we're ready to land. Now at some point here I will disconnect the autopilot and try to do this manually and see how it goes. So I've just set two knots above the minimum approach speed just for the slight tailwind that's off to our left. Eight knots at the moment, everything is looking quite good. And Beauty 5 now Lima now three miles. 
Are you airborne, sir? Negative, but thanks anyway. Have a good trip. 800 feet at 500. We'll disconnect the autopilot and the auto throttle. So let's do that now. Okay, let's see if we can do this. I think it's going to be a slightly long landing here, but we'll see. Checked. Two in reverse. Speed is reducing, not by much, but it's reducing. Okay, I'm going to go and hit the brakes. So there we go. It's our complete rollout. We didn't manage to um, get enough reverse going there, but we're okay. It's all it's all cool. Managed to stop, and that's the important thing. So landed at 48. Not the best landing in the world. But like I said, it's really kind of rushed when you've got to do everything yourself. And I'm still trying to work out my controls here, but it's all right, it's good. And 59 Lima, we're clear of the runway. So as I said, there's a lot to do here. So we start turning things off. What I generally do is just stop having cleared the runway and start doing what we've got to do. So overhead first. Turn on the APU. Lights off. Those go to off. That goes off. Wheel well goes off. Everything else is fine. That goes on to standby. So taxi to the gate. So as you can see, quite a nice day here. Landing wasn't brilliant, but we did it. So this is the payware scenery of Podgorica which looks nice and we've managed to land pretty much at sunset here which has been pretty cool the terrain's not the greatest, you can hear the bumps and as the landing gear whistles about
We have to be really careful here. Okay, parked. Just managed to avoid the stairs. So first thing to do, foot on the brakes, parking brakes engaged, up to the overhead. As you can see now the APU is on, because we've switched it on. So taxi light goes off, APU generators go on, APU bleed goes on, the engine bleeds go off. Cut two, cut one. So there you go folks, that's pretty much it. And now all we do now is to tie and let the aircraft down. So we go to the um, to the menu here, actions, ground services, chocks on, request ground power. On the overhead, we wait for this to light up. There it is. So now we go to ground power. We can switch the APU off. Anti-collision light goes off. Seatbelt signs go off. And now we start from this side. Leave the wing on, that is off. Logo can stay on for the minute. APU bleed switch goes off. I can find it. There we go. Packs go off. A and B internal go off there. Window and probe heat goes off. Check that there. Fuel pumps go off. And the yaw damper goes off as well. If I can find the spot, there it is. Fuel, 2.9 tonnes. So I make a, a note of that. 2,900. And I've noted down the um, arrival time. So let's get some uh, let's put stairs on that and let's get forward loader aft loader request stairs at one left so here comes the stairs Ground power there you can see as well, that's all sorted out. Disconnect from VATSIM now that we're here. That looks good there. There you can see the loaders. So there we go on a nice evening at Podgorica in Montenegro. Flight time was 2 hours 40 minutes and 1 second. Landing rate was 510, a little bit um, of a feet per second more than I really wanted it to be, but it was okay, we didn't trash the gear. Everything looks cool. So ladies and gents, thanks for joining me. Um, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you were able to learn something from it. Um, please understand, um, a little disclaimer here, I'm not a real world pilot. I have been flying the 737-800 in the simulator since FSX. I've got hundreds of hours in it. But this is obviously the first time, literally within the week or two weeks, that I've been flying the 800 since its release and trying to get the controls set up so I can make some decent landings. Um, not too bad as you can see, but um, loads of room for improvement. 
and remember single pilot ops here we don't have anybody else so one pilot does it all and it gets very busy especially if you're online as well so um if what i did sort of made you bulk and think oh but rubbish well okay that's fine i'm sorry but if you really liked it um please in the comments below the whole point of this really was to talk through it and just try to show you what i do um, and some of the things here, how it works. Hopefully there are some bits and pieces you learn from it. But uh, there we go. Thank you very much for joining me in this video. Welcome to a nice sunny evening here in Podgorica in Mont Montenegro. As you can see, a really nice little scenery here nestling in this plain in, in amongst the mountains. Beautiful sunset there. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next video. Two reviews coming up next week, um, which hopefully you'll enjoy. And I'll try and get another adventure video in. And we'll see how that goes. Thanks again. This is Lee, your virtual airline pilot, saying um, thanks for joining me. The 737-800 from PMDG for MSFS is a beautiful aircraft. If you're still on the fence about it, go get it. It's fantastic. Take care. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.